Morning and welcome to the Tuesday, July 11th uh, County Commission meeting. If you'd stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Uh, just a reminder to silence your cell phones if you have one. Uh, meeting documents are available next to Commissioner Bender, and if you need a listening device, Carol can help you with that. With that, we'll start with routine business. Item number one is to consider a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the agenda. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion unanimously passes. Item two are the county commission minutes of June 27th. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the minutes. Any corrections or changes? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion unanimously passes. Item two or B is the joint Sioux Falls City County uh, Council Commission minutes of June 27th. Is there a motion to approve? Move approval for the shortest meeting I can ever remember. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We have a motion and a second to approve. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. Motion unanimously passes. Passes item C is the special county commission minutes of July 6, 2017. Motion to approve. A second, and that might have been even faster. Oh, <laughs> a motion and a second to approve the county commission minutes of July 6th. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion unanimously passes. Those were less than five minutes. That's because I wasn't there probably. <laughs> <laughs> Or it had been shorter. <laughs> Dean was running it. The <laughs> record. Uh, bills to be paid of five million one hundred and forty-one thousand five hundred and seventy-four dollars and fifty-one cents. Pay the bills. Second. A motion and a second to pay the bills. Commissioner, do you have any I comments? Was deferring to the auditors. Oh, sir. I'm sorry. Uh, good morning, uh, good morning, Commissioner Mr. Bob Litz from the auditor's office, and uh, I'm here at the uh, behest of. Uh, uh, Commissioner Barth, he uh, likes to talk about the bills quite a bit, and that's a good thing. Uh, you know, the total amount of uh, five over $5 million looks like a lot of bills, but uh, uh, to put that into context, the first thing I would tell you is this is two weeks worth of bills. Um, the other thing that I would uh, uh, point out is that the highway, I just pulled the bigger bills out of highway, and this is not all inclusive, uh, came to one over $1,138,000. Um, the other big items on there are the treasurer and register of deeds, payments to the states. And those aren't really bills that we have. It's not really money we're spending. We're collecting it for others. And that amount came to $3,564,000 plus. So if you add those two bills up, or those, those two revenue streams up that we're paying out, it comes to over $4.7 million. And if you deduct that, from our uh, uh, weekly total there of uh, over $5 million, we come up with a sum of uh, $438,000, which over a two week period seems pretty low to me. But you know, I, I didn't want uh, folks looking at that $5 million and saying, what's the county doing down there? I wanted to offer some sort of an explanation as to the revenue streams and how that money is accounted for. So net effect to the general fund for those two weeks is under $450,000. Mr. Chairman, I would also comment that, you know, when the treasurer transfers uh, $3 million plus over to the state, that that doesn't make her budget over $30 million or something, that that's money that she collects and holds for the state and then we transfer it over. So the treasurer's budget is considerably less than, than even this week's transfer. And just, to, just so you know, I've tried to keep that check a couple of times and it's not been <laughs> successful. So. Well, keep trying, would you okay. please? Uh, any other comments about the bills? We have a motion and a second for approval. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, motion unanimously passes. Um, item four are reports, the Minneapolis County Highway Construction Project Report for July 2017. Item B is the County Coroner Report for May 2017. Those are filed for review. Uh, item five is personnel. Uh, the first action is to consider a motion to approve the routine personnel action. Make a motion to approve. Second. 
Motion and a second to approve routine personnel. Any comments? Good morning, Jen. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Motion unanimously passes. Item two is to recognize significant employee anniversaries. Good morning. Good morning. Jen Oddix from Human Resources. We have quite a few anniversaries this month. With five years of service, we have Ben Finley. He is a juvenile correctional officer at JDC. We have a few people with 10 years of service. Natalie Sirkalovich, Sir sorry for that pronunciation. She's a paralegal at the PDO. And then with the jail, we have correctional officers William Hoyer and Scott Vandervelde. Carrie Benz, who is the Director of Human Services, has 10 years at the Human Services Department. Um, 15 years of service is Craig Olson. He is a corporal with the jail. 20 years of service, Steve Brewer, who is a correctional officer at the jail. And Julie Vandenhall has been at the Sheriff's Office as an admin secretary for 25 years. Just want to wow. take this opportunity to thank them for all their service with the county. Yeah. Absolutely wonderful Chairman service. Craig Olson is right there. I just want you to know I went there last week to serve on jury duty. He wouldn't let me in. <laughs> <laughs> you want to say anything, Craig? Are you sure? <laughs> you get a chance for a rebuttal. <laughs> Thank you for your service. It's awesome. Any other comments? Good. Commissioner Bender. Just since we're talking about anniversaries, I was reminded yesterday that um, Carrie Benz and Stacy Teason both started on the same day, so it's also the 10 year anniversary of the Homeless Advisory Board and Stacy oh. Teason's um, tenure with um, that organization. So, congratulations to her as well. Awesome. Thank you for your service, and especially for yours, Craig. I appreciate 25 years. Um, item C is the, the volunteers in the county departments who volunteered tons of hours. Absolutely. Yep. Another great month. We had 284 volunteers who spent their time contributing to a number of different departments here, including the Siouxland Heritage Museums, the state's attorney's office, the public advocate's office, sheriff's office, JDC, emergency management, jail, and safe homes. So again, a big thanks to them and donating their time to the county. They help out in many, many ways across many departments. Uh, thanks. That's uh, an unbelievable resource and the, the amount of time that they put in and the dollar value is incredible to this community. So thank them and we certainly thank them. Mr. Chairman, uh, I just would point out that there are three columns and, uh, and two pages. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, that's a it's lot. awesome. Yep, it's just uh, it's a We're huge, very fortunate. Yeah, it's a huge benefit for all of us. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, item six is applications for abatement. There aren't any today. Uh, item seven is to authorize the county auditor to publish notice to bidders to request proposals for the admin building, coffee shop, and lunch services. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve that notice to bidders. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion unanimously passes. Item eight. Are, is the first reading in to authorize the <coughs> excuse me the county auditor to publish notice of public hearing on August 8th at 9 a.m. at the Minnehaha County Commission meeting to consider an amendment to the 1990 revised zoning ordinance for Minnehaha County. Good morning, Scott. Good morning, Scott Anderson, Planning Director. Uh, this morning, I'm asking for your approval to have the auditor publish a hearing notice for a hearing on August 8th at 9 a.m. in this room before you. Uh, it's a rezoning request to rezone approximately four acres from A1 Agriculture to uh, I1 Light Industrial. This is at the south end of Cottonwood Street. Uh, we have a, uh, someone that is interested in developing that. So as a quasi-commercial use, a warehousing commercial use. So this has gone before the Planning Commission <clears throat> at their June meeting. It was recommended approval. It was recommended for approval unanimously. And um, so uh, I have included a map, which you, is on the screen now, several, a couple maps, and uh, the minutes from the Planning Commission meeting. Uh, I've provided the auditor with the hearing notice, the ordinance, and the summary of action or the fact of adoption, uh, which should it be approved, they would need. Um, I'd be glad to answer any questions you have. Does anyone have any questions for Scott? This is the first reading. So the second reading would be on um, August uh, 8th. So I make a motion to authorize the publication. Okay, is there a second? Second. second. 
We have a motion and a second to authorize the publication. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion unanimously passes. Thank you. I Item B is a first reading and to authorize the county auditor to publish notice of public hearing on August 1st at 9 a.m. at the joint meeting of the City of Del Rapids and Minnehaha County to consider a request to vacate a 66-foot dedicated road in Section 8 of the Del Rapids Township. Good morning. Good morning, David Heinold, Planning County Planning Department. This is so this is the second time, so I'll be brief with this since uh, we've heard most of this regarding this is the first reading for a street vacation request submitted by Daniel Witte it's about a quarter mile west of Del Rapids on Highway 115 just north of that in an existing subdivision there's an existing right-of-way that lies along all the properties you see there in the red on the screen um, all the properties have access to roads that are outside of that so this is their backyard essentially um, and it connects down to Highway 115 um, this road is not developed yet, so it's just basically a right-of-way. Um, so uh, codified law requires that legal notice be published for two weeks prior to the hearing. Um, so I'd be looking for uh, the commission action to authorize the auditor to set the hearing date for August 1st at 9 a.m. Okay. Thank That's you. my Is motion, Mr. Chairman. Happy. I make a motion to publish this uh, public hearing notice. Okay. Is there a second? Any questions? All those in favor of the uh, reading for or the first reading of August 1st and the publication say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Motion unanimously passes. Thank you. Uh, item C is a first reading in, uh, to authorize the county auditor to publish notice of public hearing on August 8th at 9 a.m. at the county commission meeting to consider amendments to ordinance MC 16-90. A 1990 revised zoning ordinance for Minnehaha County for CAFO and aquaculture ordinances. Good morning. Yes, good morning. Kevin Hookman, County Planning Department. Uh, as you read, this is a, a ch first hearing for uh, to set the hearing date um, on August 8th. Uh, this is to include changes to the zoning ordinance that pertain to confined animal feeding operations or CAFOs and also to add regulations for aquaculture. Uh, the sections of the ordinance include the agricultural district, the industrial light industrial district, the general industrial district, additional use regulations, um, and the CUP section of the ordinance, and then some definitions that all pertain to those two items, the CAFOs and aquaculture. Um, the the amendments were. Uh, were presented to the Planning Commission on June 26th and they were passed unanimously by the Planning Commission. Um, so I guess uh, I presented you with lots of materials and I am here for questions or we can just publish for the hearing. Thank you. I think uh, Mr. Kersky has a question first. Maybe a comment as much as a question. I mean, these are pretty sweeping changes, especially to CAFO and um, setbacks and that type of thing. Just curious what you had for um, attendance, public input, that type of thing. Um, and I just want to create the awareness, um, maybe through the media, whatever, that you know what's what's happening in that. Um, we need to hear from you if you do have concerns out there. So can you talk about attendance or input that you've received so far? Sure. So right shortly after the notice of hearing for the pl planning commission, uh, we did receive um, a request from Ag United, for example, for to see the the uh, regulations. We've also received quest requests for the information from several other producers um, based on that and we've given them the, the proposals. Uh, at the meeting itself, there was nobody, no citizens there to, to speak to the item. Uh, there was a representative from CCOG that spoke to the item uh, and pointed out essentially that there's, this isn't just a Minnehaha County that's trying to do this. He pointed out that several other counties in the area are trying to, to revise their uh, CAFO regulations based on uh, how uh, new processes happen with CAFOs and that sort of thing. So. Commissioner Heiberger? Just had a question. Um, so we're, we, the f item A and item C are both revisions to the ordinances, and so they're different? 
I mean, one obviously one's CAFO, and it's not one, so it's going to be two different public hearings, but it's on the same subject, or it's on two different subjects, because so, both of them are 1990 revised zoning ordinances. They both are. So, so uh, item A is for rezoning, and it would be a, uh, that was a request by an individual oh, by to rezone. I'm sorry. Yep. I, yep, you're right. Okay. Yep. Sorry. No problem. Any other Pardon? questions? Oh, let Ms. Uh, Ms. Bender. Commissioner Bender. Uh, you know, I think as far as public awareness and so that people know what they should maybe be focused on, can you just give a brief summary of the kinds of changes that we're looking at making? Sure. All right. So, um, in the ordinance, there are several sections that pertain to, to CAFOs. Uh, it'll be changing some regulations in the agricultural zoning district specifically uh, for um, new Class D, which is the smallest CAFO. Uh, that would set setbacks from other existing CAFOs, which we don't have right now. So it create a buffer zone for new Class D CAFOs. Um, it would also create a setback for additional setback from the property line for these smaller CAFOs as well, uh, as requiring a, a zoning permit for these smaller CAFOs, where now uh, producers are allowed to just create a CAFO um, if, and we uh, have no way of knowing if it's been created or not, but now it would be something that would require a zoning permit to do so. Uh, similar changes are, are proposed for existing CAFOs in the agricultural district uh, where we need a, a zoning permit to expand uh, but these expansions uh, limit it to a thousand animal units for the expansion um, and they're existing prior to 1998 uh, so that would be similar to what was originally there. Um, then we add aquaculture into the uh, agricultural zoning district. Uh, there's two different classes of aquaculture, a permitted special use, which is smaller, and the concentrated are the larger aquaculture facilities, which would require a conditional use permit. Uh, this is based on both uh, EPA and also state regulations of how they are determined to be uh, either small or large enough to require a conditional use permit. Uh, so we're just basically following their regulations on that. Um, then we move to the additional use regulations, was, which really cover what is being changed for CAFOs. Uh, the concentrated animal feeding operations uh, really move some of the things around to show, to better help us uh, have what is required before a permit is required what is required after the permit is, is re obtained because previous ordinance uh, had them kind of mixed up as what's required and what's not in throughout the ordinance and it became rather confusing for both the application and for us as staff to, to know what's required and what's not. Uh, the, the probably the one of the major changes is going to be a reduction in setback distances and that'll be from the where the CAFO is being proposed to the nearest dwellings or the nearest municipality, uh, most of those setbacks are being reduced. Um, be previously, it was a large setback and then it would grow as the CAFOs expand. Uh, now, once you become a large CAFO, which is 2,000 animal units, uh, those setbacks no longer keep expanding. Uh, and this is in part uh, due to uh, reviewing, say, the um, odor footprint model, which is produced by South Dakota State Extension, um, and showing how uh, that footprint uh, does expand. There is a cap on how far that model will, will expand. Uh, and from the materials that you've seen, there's a large CAFO there, and in one of my examples that was provided to you, that shows approximately the largest that the older footprint model will show anyway. Um, so that was some of the major changes and then definition changes and, and to go along with that. So questions for Kevin? Mr. Chairman. Scott. I, I just wanted to clarify for our viewers at home on what exactly aquaculture is. Um, that's basically fish farming. We've seen some interest in re recently, like the shrimp, pro the shrimp growing farm that's going to be going in southern Minnesota, southwest Minnesota. So that would be a use that would be covered under that aquaculture. Right now, that we don't even allow that in the county. So this is going to 
basically allow that type of use in the future. So I, some people at home may not know what aquaculture is. So it'd be like raising tilapia, catfish, shrimp, and how we go about allowing that or not allowing that. So we're trying to make this uh, a benefit to the community too, should someone want to start that endeavor. I think Commissioner Benner had a good point about the issue of not having really a lot of any attendance at the discussions prior to today. Is there a way for us to, <clears throat> excuse me, to send out notices to some of the associations that might be involved that might have some input in this conversation? Because CAFOs have become mm -hmm. controversial in some cases, and I think the more information we can give out ahead of time would be to our advantage. Sure. I, I guess um, to some degree it would be what organizations. We have Egg United. We can do other egg sites or other political entities we could mail directly to or contact directly. Um, I think it would be a good idea to get some of that input before we make a decision. And we don't have a lot of time before August 8th, but if people are aware of what's going on, those changes might be important to them. I would make note that um, we have media representatives here that could be helpful in that regard as well. And I mean, I think the hardest thing to get the word out is that the really the egg producers, it sounds like, ha already have pulled some of this information, but it's the, res the rural residents, um, particularly if setbacks are being reduced, that would have perhaps the most I interest in this. And it gets harder to figure out exactly how to inform those folks. I think uh, maybe the best way to do that, we, we have a, red a readily available list of township supervisors, and they would represent a basically every single person in their townships. I think uh, if you'd like, we can uh, notify the township. There's, you know, typically a township supervisor and two other board members. They're uh, usually very well connected with their communities, and we can notify the township supervisors. Um, that might be the best way to get the word out to the to all the property owners out there. I think that's a good idea, Scott. And maybe if we could do press releases to the local rural newspapers as well. We could do that too. Mr. Chairman. Of course, a free advertising in the Argus would be perfect, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner. I just, uh, you know, being on the Planning Commission, uh, uh, we've been working and talking about this with the staff for eight months, probably minimally. And, uh, you know, some of the stuff we decided to try to change is because there, in fact, is no application in front of us that might be putting the spurs to us. I think too often, uh, people respond and change their ordinances when there's some multi-million dollar project uh, looking down the barrel at them. And, uh, you know, there's a certain absurdity in, in some of it where uh, that chicken pr uh, plan they had in Turner County would have required a 13 and a half mile setback if it had been located here because we cumulatively add on as so now we're going to have uh, where it only gets to a maximum of whatever. 13 and a half mile setback is 27 miles in diameter. And you try to place a circle 27 miles in diameter in Minnehaha County, it can't happen. That doesn't mean that we want to have any CAFOs that big. We can turn them down. But the fact is that uh, you could probably have a nuclear power plant uh, closer than 27 miles or uh, 13 and a half miles. And, uh, uh, it, uh, we're just trying to address it before it c comes up in, in front of us. And uh, as far as the aquaculture stuff, you know, they might be growing that stuff in a, in a warehouse. It could be something that goes up at Foundation Park. It's, uh, it's not a question of, uh, uh, you know, how many shrimp equal one animal unit. And no one can tell me. Uh, but uh, so we're trying to address some of the issues before they become uh, uh, a point of gigantic contention because someone's looking at investing a hundred million dollars. Commissioner Karski. And I appreciate the rest of the commission uh, joining in on my concern about getting this so that the public knows about it because I don't want to be sitting here two years from now and somebody saying you changed all those and we didn't know about it. I think that the more people know about it um, protects the interests of not just us up here but our uh, our rural residents and so on and um, yeah we've heard stories from the past where 
how did that get changed with, without a peep or nobody knowing about it? So yeah, it's important everybody knows about this and takes, pays attention to it now. I agree, Commissioner Heiberger. And, and I think they're also using scientific evidence and data and stuff, which that would update our ordinances too, which is important to know that we've actually got evidence-based research now that will give us better idea of where their setbacks should be and, and what is acceptable and what is not. So it's better than just somebody just deciding this is where we should put the circle. Yeah. Very good. Any other comments? Uh, do we have a motion? Move to set the date. Second. A second. We have a motion and a second to set the date of August 8th for the County Commission meeting to consider the amendments to the ordinance. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. Motion unanimously passes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, today there's no petitions for a compromise of lien or to a the opportunity for a public comment. If anyone has a public comment on an item that is not on the agenda, we appreciate those. Mr. Colby. Bob Colby here. And Mr. Chairperson and ladies and gentlemen of the commission, I haven't given you the opportunity for me, for you to watch me pontificate or harass you as the case may be, and you can choose that. Um, Commissioner Barth did pros, propose a, a question that I hadn't thought of before. How many shrimp equal a cow-calf <laughs> unit? <laughs> and then what size are the shrimp? But be that um, as, uh, as is, um, I was read with interest that uh, Commissioner Barth had a, uh, an interesting tete-a-tete -tete with one of the city uh, people who on the uh, what was it, the committee that he serves because the person said something that he wouldn't understand what they were trying to explain. And if I were Commissioner Barth, and I don't want to be, and he doesn't want me to be either, uh, that would tell me two things. Number one, that person doesn't understand the situation well enough to explain it so someone else can understand it. And the second thing is, if I were Mr. County Commissioner Barth, I would be seeking to help them find a job in Sioux City. <laughs> Anyhow, be that as it is, um, <clears throat> when things come up, you know, you, you, uh, I've always thought that when somebody complains about something, what's the, what's an answer to the particular problem? And the County Commission has always had the uh, shortcoming of not being well enough funded in order to do a lot of the things that they need to do. Um, one of there are three things that came to my mind. One of those is one that I proposed in the past, is that uh, the volunteer ambulance services be part and parcel of some of the gas tax that the c the state collects, because they are performing a service, and uh, this is not in the community, but on the federal and state highways, and if we can use gas tax money to mow the grass in the medians and on the periphery, why can't we use gas tax money to help service the traveling public who come from out of state, spend money here, leave gas tax money here to help assist when an accident happens on the state and federal highways. And this is not a Sioux Falls bill. This would be something that would work for all of the volunteer ambulance services across the state. So it's not a local idea. It's something that they, that they would need to have some help and some assistance in doing it because the initial reason for forming the volunteer uh, ambulance services was to service the people in that community. They didn't form to service the people, the traveling public. Now, if somebody on a county road or a township road, that's a different story. That's why I say federal and state roads. Um, Maybe this has been opposed in the past. Maybe it's a chance to take it back to the legislature. Sales tax on the fairgrounds should go to help support fairgrounds. I mean, they've tried it in the past, whether it be the tri-state, uh, I think it's the tri-state fair out in Rapid City, or whether it's a state fair, or whether it's the Sioux Empire Fair or Turner County Fair, that tax money is collected. Now, I don't know if you w want to say whether it would be all the tax money that would be collected on the fairgrounds or 
just the state portion or just the city portion that was collected on the fairgrounds is used for uh, maintenance and uh, care of the fairgrounds. And uh, that would be something that's only instituted for, what, 10 days, which is the Sioux Empire Fair, and like the Turner County, which is the weekend. <coughs> Excuse me. And lastly, is that we already have a half penny added on now, this time of the year, for assistance in governance. But it goes off in, I don't, I think it's probably September, I don't remember. They always let us know, those of us that collect it, when the, we no longer have to collect that half cent. Maybe that half cent could be continued for the full year. And so the small portion that's in the summer that comes in from the tourist, that goes to, uh, Aid and abet. Ed oh, there was a gentleman on the phone out there, and I thought somebody was commenting. Anyhow, that would take care of what they wanted for that, but that the other part of the year keep the tax in play and use that for county assistance. Not just Minneapolis County, but the counties across the state of South Dakota. And a half cent would help the budgets for all of the counties in South Dakota because every one of them seems to be coming up short. So, with that in mind, someone tried to uh, sell me some pens the other day, and you get solicited, as we all do, for one thing and another, and in order to break the ice, he said, why did the spider cross the road? <laughs> he was looking for his website. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Uh, anyone else have any public comments? Uh, with that, uh, today we have the unique privilege of having um, a proclamation in the honor of the Military Order of the Purple Heart. And I will note that I just noticed in paragraph the last paragraph, uh, we made a typo, so we'll get that corrected and get you a new copy this morning before you leave. And I apologize for not noticing that before. Um, Ken, if you would like to come up and with all of your support staff who have been just patiently waiting for us, we would like you to introduce yourself and all five or the other four individuals who are part of the Purple Heart Association, if you will. These are unique people who have given so much to all of us, and they have obviously been decorated for the uh, uh, badge of the military merit that was started by George Washington in 1782, which is incredible. Uh, we appreciate all the things that you've done for us that we have not, frankly, acknowledged before. And you guys have worked so hard at trying to do certain pieces of a cemetery-related issue, and you've got some exciting news about that um, that you were able to move forward with on Friday, which we'll talk about too. But Ken, thank you so much for being here this morning, and if you would, wouldn't mind introducing your other Purple Heart members, we would love to have, or they can introduce themselves. Um, Vic Ambrosis, Rich Wilson, Mark Williamson. Thank you so much for being here this morning. Uh, I've asked Ken to uh, read the proclamation and I'll finish it with the last paragraph, but uh, uh, if you want, would like to go ahead and do that, and again, I don't know how that we can thank you enough for what you've done. I thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, Proclamation in honor of the Military Order of the Purple Heart. Whereas the Purple Heart is the oldest decoration in present use and was initially created as the badge of military merit by George Washington in 1782. And whereas the Purple Heart was the first American service award or decoration made available to the common soldier and is specifically awarded to any member of the United States Armed Services wounded or killed in combat with the declared enemy of the United States. And whereas the mission of the Military Order of the Purple Heart 
chartered by an act of Congress in 1958 is to foster an environment of goodwill among the combat wounded veterans, members, and their families, promote patriotism, support legislative initiatives, and most importantly, make sure we never forget the sacrifices made by those so decorated and whereas veterans have paid a high price by leaving their families and communities, placing themselves in harm's way, and have given their lives for the good of all while serving in the armed forces to protect the freedoms enjoyed by all Americans. And whereas the people of Minnehaha County have great admiration and the utmost gratitude for all the men and women who have selflessly served their country and this community in the armed forces. Now, therefore, it be proclaimed that Minneapolis County, South Dakota, by the affirmative action and declaration of its Board of County Commissioners, does hereby bestow honor and gratitude upon the military order of the Purple Heart. Heart of the Plains Chapter 5355-DK-3, remember and recognize veterans who are recipients of the Purple Heart Medal and proudly supports the designation of Minnehaha County as a Purple Heart, Purple Heart County in the state of South Dakota. Approved by the commission, dated this date, the 11th of July, 2017. I think we'll all owe them a round of applause. Thank you. Um, I would just like to make a just a quick announcement on um, let's see, it's July 19th that the Purple Heart Run, if you will, featuring a mobile equipped Ford pickup truck, will be at the Sioux Falls Ford, uh, which is now on West 26th Street, and there will be a short ceremony on that uh, date at 10 a.m. So if anyone can attend, that would be awesome. We'd love to have you here or there. And we'd also uh, like Ken to make a short announcement about the progress that he's been working hard on since, gosh, I don't know how many years, but there is some progress being made on a special project that, frankly, he should have the ability to tell us about. I would like to introduce Mr. Terry Hansen. He's the president of the South Dakota Bet Council. Paulson. Thanks, Ken. Paulson, sorry. <laughs> Ken's going to be my vice chair, hopefully, on the uh, South Dakota Veterans Council. Good morning to everyone. Um, uh, again, uh, congratulations to the Purple Heart members. It is, uh, having served 30, over 30 years myself, it is quite an honor to be in the presence of these individuals. So congratulations to all. Um, just a brief update on what's going on in, in uh, the, the, uh, the council with the South Dakota Veterans Council. Uh, for those that don't know, um, we consist of the American, Le or, uh, the American Legion, the VFW, the Paralyzed Veterans, the Disabled American Veterans, the Vietnam Veterans, and the Military or the Purple Hearts. That consists of the South Dakota Veterans Council. We meet quarterly, and last year one of our priorities was to establish a state veteran cemetery on the east side of the state. Uh, it's been talked about many times over the last 10, 15 years, and it just never seems to gain any traction. Um, I'm pleased to announce that we had a meeting with the governor's office um, a week ago or so. Um, we feel like we're moving in the right direction. Uh, we've made contact with the National Cemetery Administration out in uh, Washington. Um, South Dakota is one of five states that does not have a state veteran cemetery, and that's a shame. And we're trying to correct that. And with the federal cemetery out in Sturgis, um, and that's all great, um, we feel the need for a state veteran cemetery on the east side of the state um, because the next largest cemetery would be Fort Snelling in Minneapolis. So there's a very large uh, distance in between those cemeteries. So uh, we are looking forward. Um, to working with the uh, governor's office 
uh, to um, move this forward. Um, I think we have um, a good idea of where it's going to be, uh, just based on where the population is, is most concentrated on the east side of the state. Um, I cannot say where that is right now because mm -hmm. we're waiting on a letter from Washington to determine that. But um, in the process, we'll be looking for some land, um, roughly 20 to 40 acres somewhere in that neighborhood that um, the veterans will be able to uh, use as their resting place when um, that time comes. So um, more to follow. We will certainly keep the commission up to, up to date on where we're going with this. But we are encouraged that this is going to happen. Um, and uh, we, we know it's going to be on the east side of the state somewhere. So um, just want to say thanks to, to all of you for all your work and, and helping us get there. And I will uh, certainly keep you all up to date as we move forward. So. Well, thank you for your tenacity in making that happen. We, uh, I don't know that we can take any credit for all of you guys' this hard work. And you deserve the acclaim of making that happen. So uh, please keep us posted. and. Frankly, we, we want to be part of it if we can. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Anybody have any comments? Uh, item number 11 is to consider a motion to authorize a transfer of proceeds from an agreement with the South Dakota Department of Transportation dated June 27th for South Dakota Highway 100 reconstruction project to be deposited into a restricted account for the jurisdiction agreement under the highway fund instead of the Minneapolis County General Fund as previously agreed. Mr. Litz. Bob Litz from the auditor's office. Uh, hard act to follow here with my little bookkeeping correction, but uh, uh, you pretty well encapsulated what I wanted to say, Gerald. So the action that I'm requesting today is that the commission authorization to deposit the transfer funds into the county road and bridge fund under the account of jurisdictional agreement for future facility project. Anyone have any questions about that transfer for Mr. Litz? Move to approve. Second. Uh, second to authorize a transfer of proceeds. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Motion unanimously passes. Thank, Thank you. you. Item 12 is to consider a motion to approve two agreements between the state's attorney's office for Indian child welfare fell Child Welfare Act Qualified Expert Witness. Judy. Yeah, good morning. Judy Workcamp, Deputy State's Attorney. Um, I'm <coughs> here today to request two actions, asking for authorization to approve an agreement between the uh, State Department of Social Services, which will provide the State's Attorney's Office with funds to acquire and hire an Indian Child Welfare Act expert. Um, uh, to provide testimony and other services. I'm also asking for authorization to approve the agreement between um, Luke Yellowrobe, who is a, a ICWA specialist expert, uh, and the county. Thank you. Anyone have any questions for Judy? I think this is a contract we've had in place for a number of years. Yes. I make a motion to approve. Second. A motion and a second to approve the contract with the Child Welfare Act expert witness. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Motion unanimously passes. Thank you. Item 13 is to consider a motion to authorize the highway department to purchase two truck bodies and hydraulic systems from custom truck equipment in the amount of $64,248 each for a total of 128,496. DJ Boothie. Good morning, Commissioner. DJ Boothie, Highway Superintendent. Uh, current South Dakota state purchasing laws allow you to purchase off an existing contract for a period of 12 months, as long as, as the vendor will agree to that purchase. On September 21st in 2016, uh, we awarded a truck body and hydraulic uh, package uh, through Custom Truck uh, for the purchase of two truck bodies and hydraulic systems and uh, this year we have money budgeted for an additional two trucks to be purchased and so we're requesting your authorization today uh, to sign a uh, purchase agreement with custom truck uh, for uh, two trucks using the bid that we had last year and it, this is similar to if we were to purchase off another entity's bid 
uh, that had already been executed. It just simply is our own bid. And so uh, the total price for the two uh, trucks will be $128,496. And that's for the, again, the bodies and the hydraulic systems that will fit onto the chassis. Any questions for DJ? Is there a motion? Move to approve. Second. Motion and a second to approve the two truck bodies and hydraulic systems. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion unanimously passes. Item 14 is to consider a motion to authorize the highway department to purchase two tandem axle trucks through the state of Minnesota standard purchasing contract in the amount of $121,970 and $124,176. DJ. Commissioners, this item accompanies the previous item. These are the chassis or the, uh, the driving units and the cab for the uh, snowplow trucks uh, that were previously per uh, approved on the previous item. Uh, there's two different prices for these uh, chassis units and, and basically it's uh, about $2,200 more for one of them to be set up as a towing unit. And so we, rather than uh, purchase a whole bunch of semi trucks in our fleet, uh, we outfit a lot of our snowplow trucks uh, to be able to tow large trailers and, and the paver, for example, that kind of thing. So um, uh, there's two different prices for the chassis. Uh, the total I don't have added up here. Uh, $246,086. Uh, for the two chassis and then uh, uh, requesting your approval for me to sign the, the purchase uh, agreement with Sheehan Mack. This is off the Minnesota state bid. Any questions for DJ on that purchase? Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the purchase of the two tandem axle trucks through the state of Minnesota. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion unanimously passes. Thank you. Thank you. Item 15, our County Commissioner Liaison Report. Does anyone have a liaison report? Commissioner Heiberger. One. Now, we are hosting a group um, from Clayton County, Georgia, next door in the training room, um, to um, which is a, a workshop hosted or paid for by the Annie Casey Foundation, and we are working with uh, school districts in Minnehaha County and the justice to create, hopefully, to hopefully to create a memorandum of understanding between the schools and the justice partnership. And what that would hopefully do is um, come to an understanding of what types of things are um, sent through the court system or sent to the court system through the school districts through the SROs that just end up doing a revolving door. They come in and we don't charge them and they go back out. And to help the the schools know what types of alternatives are available for them to keep them in-house and not be sending them through the judicial system all the time. Um, it's a program that's done across the United States um, by Judge Teske and his group. They brought in six people. There are um, numerous states and counties or um, districts, school districts that are using this program and it's been very effective. And so they came into South Dakota, like I said, paid for by the NEKC Foundation to work with our school districts and see how we could possibly put together uh, the same type of, type of partnership between our justice system and the school districts. And I sat through the meetings, most of the meetings yesterday, and then we'll sit through the rest of today. Um, we had great stakeholders. I think we had about 28 people in that very <laughs> tight room um, working on this. And, and it, I mean, yesterday it sounded really good. So hopefully we will continue to move forward with this. And afterwards, um, it's not a done deal after today. The partners will, or the stakeholders in the room, we're going to have to continue to work to work through this project. So, Thank you for your service on that group. Anyone else have any liaison? Reports, Commissioner Karski. Last week I spent uh, about an hour in a regular meeting with Carrie Benz and much of her staff. We discussed, um, among other things, um, reimbursement rate for um, funerals to for local people who die without the means of um, paying for their final expenses, what's fair and that type of thing. So a proposal will be coming here shortly for the rest of the commission to take a look at. We also looked at indigent health care um, and the potential for you know, the millions of dollars that the county basically could be on the hook for and how to best manage that program, the amount of time spent with staff and legal and so on and so forth. We're trying to get 
our arms around it, and I think we have some interesting proposals that will be forthcoming for discussion. So um, just to let you know that there are numerous things going on at Human Services. Just a question for Dean. Did you hit, meet with the funeral home directors already? We did not meet with the funeral directors. We're just trying to figure out what's fair and equitable, and you know they shouldn't have to go backwards, basically, when they take care of somebody like that. So, but also the citizens of Minnehaha County, you know, 99 and a half percent of them pay for their own final expenses. So, what's fair to everybody, and how to how to do it properly? So, with with dignity. Any other liaison reports? Uh, any new business? Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Barth. You know, uh, I'm just uh, going to take a moment and respond to uh, com uh, former Commissioner Colby's comment. And I think he reminded me of the issue of the sales tax at the fairgrounds, which uh, most people don't know, but we don't collect city sales tax on the fairgrounds. We collect the state sales tax. It's a sovereign territory of the county uh, s s inside the city of Sioux Falls. And uh, kind of like the old uh, Russian embassy in D.C. is Soviet uh, territory. Anyway, uh, potentially uh, on a legislative basis, we could get permission to <coughs> collect the city sales tax within that boundary and, and remit it directly to the uh, fairgrounds to support their activities, which are an incredible benefit to the local economy. And uh, anyway, I just uh, a lot of what Bob had to say was kind of in code, which maybe only he and I understood. But <laughs> uh, the part about the sales tax, I think, uh, is something we should uh, reconsider. Do you have how many shrimp are in a CAFO yet? Uh, the staff has not been able to tell me. They okay. won't even tell me how many carp in a ca <laughs> in a uh, animal unit. Any other new business? old business with that there is not an executive session today so motion to adjourn second. Second. motion and a second to adjourn all those in favor say aye aye, aye. unanimously passes can we do have uh, your proclamation complete i think or close to it as soon as olivia gets done stamping we've talked about it